Hi. Hi man, how you doing? Am I nice? Okay, ready? I'm ready, bro. Yeah, I'm like... <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> uh, so do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Junaid. I'm a third year medical student. Uh, I also do YouTube. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so my name is Naj, um, and I'm one of Daha's flatmates. And I've just finished my third year of medical school. My name is Musa. Well, I was going to say I'm a third year student, but we finished third year now, so technically fourth year. Hi, my name is Awais, and I'm a third year well, going to fourth year now, medical student at Newcastle University and uh, our friend as well, from Sheffield originally. More of an acquaintance, but we'll, we're working on that, anyway. Like, learning and applying the information that we've learned like on a cellular level and then applying it to real life scenarios where you actually see the patient. It's not just a question or a made up scenario, you're actually applying the knowledge and like you're treating the patients, like you're on placement, you see what's wrong with the patient, and then you see them a few weeks later, for example, if it's a GP surgery, they come in and then they're a lot better, and then there's something else wrong with them. So we've had that exposure to the wards and the patients, and <clears throat> we've had that time to sort of get to know what the job's like itself, not just the theory behind it. So I think it's gained a bit more of a real life experience of what medicine actually is and what the job of a doctor is. Ooh, all right. Third year's been like the biggest step in terms of you know, just doing like loads of work in your books to actually seeing patients, going on the ward. And in terms of things that we had to learn, it was more like conditions, like investigations, how to treat them, rather than like little how things work, what goes wrong. So it was more, definitely a lot more patient focused. And that was like the main difference, I would say. You know, we didn't go to the university this year. We literally just went to the hospital. We had our teaching in the hospital on the wards. It was a very different environment. And I think that's when you really start to enjoy medicine. And I think that's what happened with me this year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think my iPad actually. Um, my iPad. I had it with me pretty much all the time. Now that I think about it, um, whenever I went on the wards, I'd always jot a quick note down on my iPad. And yeah, I could use a notepad and pen, but everything's backed up in the cloud and everything's super fluid and easy to use. Um, so I just use the iPad. My stethoscope. Yeah. Oh yeah, stethoscope, definitely bring a stethoscope. Otherwise you're gonna have to share, like Taha always took mine and he forgot his. Oh yeah, I did actually, yeah. yeah. Um, That's why I kept on getting ear infections, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, there's probably a lot of other things, but honestly, I think it's just my phone. Like, having your phone there, you know, when the consultant's talking or you're just not quite like, sure, you can just easily Google, or sometimes all the little scores, so you can just say to the patient, all right, I'm missing a crack at the score real quick. And um, it's actually such a good tool and I feel like we should incorporate it a bit more because all the doctors went on the ward to just use your phone is literally really helpful. Always make sure you dress up with the correct dress code. Mm -hmm. That's 100% because once I wore the wrong shoes and um, got sent home. Really? No. I wore the wrong shoes and he, uh, one of the consultants really told me off. Um, and uh, just bring good vibes and a passion to learn. I think maybe when I assisted on the C-section. Like observing and scrubbing in for like a C-section. I saw some incredible surgeries, um, even though I don't want to be a surgeon anymore. <laughs> Long story, but uh, I'd say like helping in a cesarean section, assisting in a cesarean section, like it's such an incredible experience and it's so humbling and just to know that you played a role in bringing that person to life. Um, like subhanAllah, even as a Muslim as well, like it's, I found it so like uh, humbling as a Muslim. Just how gruesome it is and how inhumane it kind of looks behind the scenes when the patient doesn't know, especially like a C-section. Like where they make the scar and they literally just pull the person apart. Yeah, I think that's definitely been something I wasn't expecting. You know, bringing life into the world, mm. uh, extraordinary feeling. And then closing up as well, um, I, I assisted stitching as well, stitching up the um, abdomen and that was really nice, really good, amazing experience. I would say the, one of the best ones I've seen was we're in the resuscitation room um, and there was an old lady who kind of fell over and unfortunately she hit her face on the wall but also landed on her shoulder and it like dislocated. So she had like a cut on her head but it wasn't like it kind of clotted up so it wasn't too bad and we started dislocating the uh, putting the shoulder back into place and as we were making the move 
like the cut, the clot dislodged, and like the blood kind of like spurted out onto one of the doctors. It was like kind of like probably like Grey's Anatomy type. Like it kind of went, and then everyone was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. we need to focus on the head again. And like it was funny because I was just sitting on the other side. Yeah, I just see some blood spurt out, and I'm like, bro, this is crazy. And then the, the end, of the, the lady was okay. They put the shoulder back in place. They cleaned up the head, so it was alright. But it was really cool. Just learning to be okay with not knowing everything. Um, and just knowing where to find the information if I do need the information. So it's okay not to know everything. As long as you know how to find the right answer or ask the right people just to get to that. It's really key to have you know, people around you that you know, have the same mindset as you uh, in terms of medicine, in terms of life, in terms of everything else as well. Because you know, they can push you and you push them as well and that makes everyone sort of click and feel you know, like you belong here. I don't know, for this year, I think I can do like, go out a lot more, do a lot more, because the first two years I was kind of in my room, always playing card, always working, and this year I've kind of been more out and about, you know, we play like board games every day, or well, sometimes we used to play board games every day, we used to watch movies, it was more like less work focused and more just enjoying what's going on, so I think I can incorporate more like free time doing, you know, having fun in terms of like shifting that balance, so I think I learned that a lot. I think I've learned a lot about myself. Um, one thing that I have learned is, I think I'm good at sort of comp compartmentalizing things and breaking things down. Because when the going gets tough and like when you have a lot of things to do at the same time, because obviously I do YouTube as well, like like you, um, I've just learned how how to manage my time better and how to like break down big tasks into smaller chunks um, so that I don't become overwhelmed by what's in front of me. Uh, I think it's living with you. Oh. Yeah. Wait! Hmm. Um, I'm looking at it right now. What? <laughs> please, with, print, with, with sugar on top! Pretty please! Uh, to be honest, I would just gonna say it's COVID because especially for like our first few placements when COVID was kind of like really big and the hospitals didn't really know how to combat what was going on. Our education kind of suffered a lot. Um, like we haven't been able to see as many patients as we normally would. Like even the GP surgeries, a lot of the consultations have been over the phone. So the patients don't come in and we don't really examine them unless we need to. For the clinics, they were like cancelled, people wouldn't come in, so we couldn't really develop like our histories or examination technique or really see anything. But the rest of the year, it kind of went smoothly as COVID uh, kind of calmed down a little bit and we were able to come in more. Oh my God, online teaching, man. It's just not the one. Learning from teams, like, I'm half asleep in the mornings. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just not the one. And I think, luckily, you know, the situation seems to be easing up. Um, I think, you know, we're back on normal placements now, but that, that whole time we had those online lectures and stuff, just, you know, like. Maybe waking up very, very early. That's what, I'm not a morning person. Um, and you know, it's, you know how we like how we all live together. Um, you know, as a group, we all tend to chill together like late as well. Sometimes too late on uh, uh, placement days. And you know, waking up like seven a.m., half, half past seven. It's just I'm not a morning person at all. So I'd say my least favorite thing is waking up early for placement. Yeah. <laughs> I was there struggling with sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, you know, prioritize your sleep a lot because. Although, you know, you can wake up, be tired, but you'd be like, oh, I can have a coffee and get through the day. Your learning won't be, you know, at its peak. The way I revised for this year, it wasn't as efficient as I have done in the past. Towards the exam, I was like forgetting things that normally I would know, like, you know, e like easy answers, and I was kind of forgetting them. So I kind of struggled a bit about how I was revising. Maybe I started a bit too early and kind of like peaked and then came down. But definitely going into fourth year, I'm gonna have a have a little think about how I kind of went about that and try and see what's going on. I mean, when I started medical school, I just kind of wanted to know everything. I wanted to be someone who who knew every single thing. I think just in third year, especially being on placement, just knowing the amount that I have to know for third year and for my exams at this stage, there's no point in like learning something very specialised when I don't need to know it for my exams. Um, and especially when it's not really interesting. I just start managing my time better so I have time to relax and enjoy myself. And then also learning, learning the relevant stuff and sort of just trying to learn everything. Uh, struggle. Um, okay, everyone says this, but it's, 
it's quite true. I think the transition from preclinical to clinical is a really, really big one. And um, I think in preclinical, you have lectures and everything's sort of organized for you. Um, like, you know what you need to learn and you know when you're gonna learn it and all that stuff. But with clinical years, this year has been really tough in the sense of we were just given like a list of conditions and we were expected to do our own learning and find our own resources and actively seek out those patients on the wards. And I think it was a lot more self-directed, it was a lot more independent. But I think, I think the biggest thing I learned is just ask the years above, ask the people in the years above for tips and advice because I did that and obviously you guys did that as well and they came in clutch, like they really helped provide perspective, they told us how to study um, and, and what to focus on. Yeah. Yeah man, it's been amazing. Uh, third year has been like, it's been one of the best years of med school so far. Yeah bro, third year was, third year was great. I think it's a lot more interesting than first and second year because like I said, you can actually see the differences you're making and you're applying the knowledge that you've actually learned. Um, and just being on placement and just talking to lots of different people and patients and their families is really, really interesting. I'd say the best thing, I'm not even going to lie, is just living with you guys. Um, the, but the friends I have here is, like, they're just they're all amazing. Everyone's different. My guy, come on. Everyone's like, everyone just has their own personality. Everyone brings something different to the table. And, and um, I, I just feel like, I can honestly say, memes aside, I know Fast and Furious memes, whatever. Oh. But like, you guys are like my second family, so. The amount of patients we've seen, all the wards we've been on, the different rotations like women's health, child, uh, even like psychiatry that we were on. Um, and then honestly, the last like four weeks of A&E placement, that really sold it for me. Because I, I really enjoy A&E, just like fast pace. And bro, I think that was definitely the highlight of my year, the last SSC. Yeah, absolutely. So despite COVID, we were allowed in the wards, we were allowed in the theatres, clinical time. And there's a lot of online teaching as opposed to face-to-face -face teaching, but I see that was the only sort of big barrier other than, you know, um, the whole COVID situation, which was um, very difficult, you know, in itself. But I feel like I really did enjoy this year. Guys, if you're watching this and you're going to go into clinical years, the biggest advice I'd give is be opportunistic. When I was on A&E, like, even though my shift was like 4 till 11, um, Sometimes I'll stay extra just to wait to see like a cool patient coming in or I would ask, oh, is it okay if I, you know, have a go at like putting on wound care, like putting on like glue and steri strips and um, even the people you meet, like I've met so many doctors that I've potentially I've made a link with that can help me out in the future um, and come and work with. So just be more opportunistic about the things that you're interested in and what you want to do, what you want to see, and you get a lot more out of it, I would say. There's going to be other students on the wards and there's going to be a limited number of doctors and an unlimited number of patients. And you have to actively seek out uh, opportunities, speak to the doctors themselves and sort of tell them before you go on placement what you want to see and what you hope to get out of that placement. Otherwise, you'll just be stuck in a clinic doing nothing and listening to the doctor on the phone or you know, just watching consultations. Yeah, just be, be confident. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I think one of the things I struggled with was if I wasn't confident, I didn't want to do the thing. But you don't become confident unless you actually do it. So for example, like I was with Taha and we were taking bloods and if I couldn't find the veins properly, I'd, I'd, I'd not want to attempt it. But then it's really knowing where I'm going wrong and then like being observed by a doctor and just like increasing the confidence, knowing where I'm going wrong, learning where I'm going wrong so it doesn't happen again, kind of thing. So it's definitely just, even if you're unsure about something, as long as you're being observed by a doctor, like just doing stuff basically. Even if it's like a history taking and you've never heard of the thing before, just ask the things you know and just be, just be confident. Just appear confident, I think that's the biggest thing. Even if you're not confident, appear confident. Definitely find out what works for you in terms of revision. Like what works for Taha, might not work for me. Definitely find a technique that works for you, and it does, and it can change throughout as well. Like what I did in first year was different to what I did in third year, mm. and then you'll see how that reflects on you know and how you do in exams. And I'd say definitely experiment a lot, and also for placement years, definitely know your clinical knowledge beforehand. So if you're going in a cardiology ward, you know know your heart exam to prepare you for you know, seeing patients and histories. Just make sure you know everything there is to know, and then that way you get the most out of it. Cool. Thank you, Raj. Yeah, thank you, bro. Let's go, bro. Thank you, Raj. Yeah, man.
Mais Ah, ça compte ça. La Alright, Wes, thank you so much. Thank you, Tom. Any last words before you go away? Um, I was supposed to do this. I told her.